13 WMAZ morning starts now. Looking live over downtown this morning where it's a cool start, but a warm afternoon on the way. That's what we'll do all week long. Details are coming up. Details on a 50 year old man killed in Macon. What info the sheriff's office is sharing with us this morning. This is the worst wreck I've seen in my career. Three people dead after a crash in Macon. We explain what happened. And leaves are falling and so are the daylight hours. How seasonal depression impacts people around us and some solutions coming up. Good Monday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. The time is now 631 AM here on this October the 3rd. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Wanya Reese. And I'm Kaylin Hank. And thankfully this morning off to a really nice start outside. Yeah, definitely beautiful weather this morning, Alex. Yes, and we're going to be looking at a fantastic afternoon as well as temperatures rise into the mid 70s. Not quite as warm as we got yesterday, but still really nice. 59 in Macon right now, 55 in Warner Robins. I always think that's interesting because these two sensors are like two miles apart. The Macon sensors at Middle Georgia Regional. The Warner Robins sensor is there at the base and they're always just a, somewhat of a gap there. 50 57 in Jeffersonville, 58 in Irvington, and 57 in Dudley. Some more 50s down towards the south as well. The radar picture quiet here in central Georgia and quiet across the southeast. No rain to speak of. That low pressure that you see there off the Virginia coast, that's actually what's left of Hurricane Ian. It went up into the mountains, did a U turn, and is now back over the water. But it's what's called a mid latitude cyclone now, which means no threat of developing into a tropical system. Look for temperatures to rise into the 70s this afternoon. Our average high is 83. 75 is what I'm going with here for the high temperature under some mostly sunny skies. Just a few afternoon clouds. Sunrise comes your way at about 730 this morning. And we've got much of the same on the way for the week ahead. We'll be talking about that and dry air into the fair. We'll be talking about the details and what to expect for the Georgia National Fair, which of course starts on Thursday. Well, thank you, Alex. We'll check in with you soon. Right now, a 50 year old man is dead after an apparent domestic dispute on Zebulon Road. Well, the Bibb Sheriff's Office says they got a call around 2.30 yesterday afternoon to a home on Zebulon. Deputies then got a second call from the home saying someone had been shot. Deputies found 50 year old Eddie Riddle of Macon dead in the home. The Bibb Sheriff's Office says Riddle's wife, Letitia Riddle, made the original 911 call. Riddle's wife and mother in law are now being questioned by investigators. This morning, three people are dead after a crash on I-475 South in Macon. It happened just after 2 yesterday afternoon. It happened between Thomaston Road and Eisenhower Parkway exits. The Bibb Sheriff's Office says a black Chevy SUV went off the road, hit a tree, and caught fire. Coroner Leon Jones says three people in that SUV died. He says they're still working to identify those victims, but they believe it's a young family, including a child. The 31 years in the coroner's office, this is the worst wreck I've seen in my career. Jones says the car was registered in the Jacksonville, Florida area. Once we confirm more information, we'll update you on air and online at 13WMAZ.com. 633 right now, a woman is dead after walking in front of a truck on Okmulgee East Boulevard over the weekend. The coroner says 21 year old Keiston Wilson died at the hospital. Wilson walked into the path of a Dodge Ram truck on Saturday. They say this all happened on Roderick Road just before 8 p.m. Another woman died over the weekend after a deadly traffic accident in Macon. Coroner Leon Jones confirmed the victim is 48 year old Misty Reithemeyer. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says it happened on Sterling Drive at Treadway Drive just after 4 Saturday afternoon. Reithemeyer was driving a Volvo on Sterling when she crossed the center line. She hit a Honda Civic driven by a 30 year old woman from Forsyth in the eastbound lane. The driver of the Honda Civic was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Well, in your news from across the state, an inmate who escaped two months ago in Connecticut now sits in jail after being captured at his own birthday party in Metro Atlanta. The Henry County Sheriff's Office says the 31 year old was serving time on a robbery charge in Connecticut when he left without permission. Saturday, the Sheriff's Office got a tip. He was at a family member's house in McDonough. They arrested him just as they were setting up for the party. Right now, non-emergency 911 calls are clogging up Atlanta's E911 system and taking up dispatchers time. So poorly, the red light is so long, it's so infuriating that it is a crime. And I'd like to press charges, I guess. Press charges on who? I guess against the city for kidnapping me and holding me hostage there at that traffic light. Uh, the city says these are the kind of calls they're getting. They started pleading with people to only call 911 for actual emergencies. E911 Director Desiree Arnold said they've gotten calls about spiders and lost glasses. Arnold says calls like that affect their response times for true emergencies, and it can mean the difference between life and death. 
Well, this morning, a UGA student sits in jail accused of making terroristic threats on the social media platform Yik Yak. It's an anonymous messaging app. UGA Police Chief Daniel Silk says the student went into custody early yesterday morning after they got information from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. UGA Police says the student is from Virginia and was living in Brumby Hall and was taken to the Clark County Jail. Here's an act of kindness that went a long way. In Walton County, deputies helped a man make it to his wedding. So John Dial got into a wreck just a couple miles from the venue with three of his groomsmen. So Deputy Chris Bramlett did not hesitate to make sure they got to the ceremony. The groom's mother told our sister station all the airbags deployed, but none of the men had a scratch on them. In a post on Facebook, the sheriff's office wrote, remember to teach your loved ones to care about others, just not themselves. And Caitlin, like I told you before, the wifey, she would not be too happy Ooh. if I was late to our wedding. Hey, you know, it would make for an interesting story, but it's a story you don't want to have to tell. Oh, not at all. Now, this morning, new details on the AJC Peachtree Road Race. For the first time in 30 years, there will not be a lottery. Entry to the race will now be gained on a first come, first served basis and members will be able to have exclusive access to registration, which opens up on March the 8th and runs until my birthday, March the 14th. <laughs> now the general public will then be able to register until the deadline on June the 4th or as soon as the maximum capacity is reached. Well, in just a couple of hours, Truland County Schools will reopen today. Friday, they went ahead and closed as a precaution ahead of Hurricane Ian's impact here in Central Georgia. It's now 637 just into the newsroom this morning. Right now, the Bibb County Sheriff's Office is investigating after a man was shot in the leg just after one this morning. A deputy say they got a call about a person down in the middle of the road in the 3200 block of Rice Mill Road. When they got there, they found a 47 year old male man with a gunshot in the leg. Right now he's in the hospital in critical but stable condition. We'll update you on air and online as we learn more details about this. Looking ahead now in downtown Macon, we will have first Friday this week. Macon night to be able to enjoy different entertainment, nightlife venues, eat some good food at the local restaurants down there. It's happening, of course, Friday in downtown Macon. They encourage you to use hashtag downtown Macon to see more details. This weekend, you can take your kids to a Kool-Aid and Canvas art class. Your kids will learn from an artist step-by-step -step through the process of creating a fun painting with acrylics on real canvas. The workshop is meant for kids ages 6 to 12. It starts at 1030 at the 567 Center. It'll be about an hour and a half. $20 includes all the materials that you'll need. To register, you can go to the 567 Center's website. With the days getting shorter and some people's moods being on the decline, our morning reporter TJ Anthony shows you some ways to go ahead and push through. Plus, the Georgia National Fair happens this week. We share some things that you need to know before you pull out of your driveway and head to the Georgia National Fair. The time is now 6.38 a.m. here on your Monday morning, and it's nice to see that we're going to have a fair, and it's mm -hmm. going to feel like fall because, yeah. Caitlin, you and I know the weather could it could be a hurricane, it could be a severe <laughs> thunderstorm, <laughs> it could like be fall, knock on it could be hot. Quick. I'm sorry, I'm going to be honest. It, it's true. It, it could be all those things, but it's not that this week. No, not this week, thankfully. <laughs> not this year. I was going to say, I was looking at a little tropical map over here. There's a little orange blob nope, in the nope, Caribbean. No, 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 no. If Wangye spoke that into existence. Nope, nope. It happens. <laughs> You're not going to put this on me. <laughs> Georgia weather is all over the place. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't been talking about it this morning because we're not too concerned about it. it you know, the writing was on the wall for Ian. If you remember, we were talking about that for like a week and a half before it happened. This one, not too concerned about it. Let's take a live look over Dublin this morning. You can see the beginnings of the sun beginning to come up over the horizon. You might remember a few months ago about this time. The sun was up. We were well on our way through the day. Not so much as the sunrises keep getting later here in central Georgia as we take look across the area. The radar picture is quiet. Some clouds as you head out towards the Savannah River this morning. Temperatures there in the 50s pretty much statewide, but take a look up towards Blairsville as you get up into the Smoky Mountains there in Tennessee and North Carolina. How about 40s, low 40s at that. In fact, you see that dark blue back there? That would be 30 degree temperatures. So seeing that this morning, probably close to uh, the Murphy, North Carolina area. The air very dry as well as we are looking at a wind out of the north. But as we head through the day today, expect these 50s we're seeing now to turn into 70s by the noon hour. 71 here in Macon, 70 in Warner Robins, topping off somewhere in the mid 70s. I've got 75 as our high temperature here in Macon today. And then once we head into the evening tonight, look for those temperatures to fall back down into the 50s. Starting off maybe a degree or two cooler tomorrow morning than we are this morning. But as we head into the day, expect to get a degree or two warmer than we're going to get today. So a bigger gap in terms of the high and low temperature tomorrow than we're going to see today. And then even more so as we get into Wednesday, starting off in the low 50s once again, but then closer to 80. In fact, I think 
think we touch 80 here in Macon before all is said and done on Wednesday. Of course, the fair starts on Thursday. The picture across the southeast is going to be perfect once we get into Friday. Maybe a few clouds in and around the area. This is going to be as a front is approaching from the north, and that front is going to bring some cooler air with it by the time we get to the weekend. What it's not going to bring is the rainfall going to be completely dry as we head through the weekend and into next week, of course, as the fair continues here in central Georgia. So these high temperatures steadily warming up 75 today, 77 for tomorrow, back to 80 by the time we get to Wednesday and then 85 there by the time we get to Thursday. Also looking at this dry air to continue dew points in the 50s or 40s, which is either pleasant or comfortable, not looking at the humid stuff for the next few weeks. The other thing that continues to be dry are soils. In fact, we're now looking at abnormally dry conditions according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. Upson County up towards Metro Atlanta, back down through Jones, Baldwin, Wilkinson, and uh, let's see, we got... Uh Twiggs County there and then down towards the south, including parts of Houston County, Bleckley County, down towards Dodge County and Crisp County as well. And a few more spots across the southeast looking at abnormally dry conditions, including up along the mid Atlantic coast now where they are looking at actually a level two drought. So as we head through the day today, look for these 60s to turn into 70s, 75 going to be the high temperature under some mostly sunny skies. A few afternoon clouds sunrise comes your way at about 730 this morning. Then for tonight, 51, it's going to be a clear, perfect fall night. Night. Sunrise or sunset, excuse me, is at 717. There's your seven day forecast again back into the 80s beginning on Wednesday, 85 by Friday and then into the 70s for the weekend. A perfect weekend to spend outside as we roll on through the month of October.